I hope this means in your free time you're going to come guest anchor with me soon. Stephanie, that would be fun to do, and you always want to have a backup occupation in my line of work, but uh, I'll also be busy as executive chairman, so it, it's good to be on with you and Corey again. All right, well, tell me, what is your new role going to be? What's it going to be like day to day? Well, the new role will function in areas where the next CEO, Chuck, wants me to focus on, probably around the areas of being advisor to him on vision and strategy, watching him grow to be a great CEO, which I think he will be. I'll be his wingman in many areas like country digitization, which is the next frontier for Cisco and compare our growth, not for one to two years, but for 10 years. Uh, focus a lot on key strategic partnerships, uh, key customer relationships and speaking. And so bottom line is Chuck will be the CEO. He will make the decisions. I will become his wingman, and it will be fun. And I'm really excited about this. And I had my best night's sleep in 20 years last night. <laughs> I can only imagine. John, what was it about <laughs> Chuck? You know, you, you've, you've got a deep bench there. There are a couple of people who are, uh, were yes. in the running for this job. What was it in particular about Chuck? Was it, was it his sales expertise? Was it operational matters? I mean, Cisco's been through a lot of changes over a lot of years, but particularly in the last few years. Well, it's really exciting. Uh, the board picked Chuck. Uh, my job was to get several candidates ready. Their job was to pick the person they wanted to run over the next decade and for me to, to uh, be his advisor as we do that. What was so unique about Chuck is let's look at the results over the last 20 years. We literally have our stock up uh, in terms of total shareholder return over 1,600 percent. You have earnings per share up over 3,300 percent. Uh, you look at what we've been able to accomplish in terms of our business momentum, it's because we got these market transitions right. Chuck is world class at taking vision and strategy and executing off of it. He's done that in the commercial marketplace, he's done that in enterprise, he's done it uh, in channels. He also is very good about aligning resources in a collaborative style that still allows him to move quickly. So he builds great teams, he gets the results, he's a perfect cultural match, and he's very technical, a math major by background. So explain to me what does he need to do to really help with Cisco's long-term growth? You've been in that seat for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Well, we're very pleased with our long-term growth, and uh, Chuck articulated, I think, very well yesterday. He's pretty comfortable with the vision and strategy. Uh, we're winning in the market. Our customers get that. We were just with our top channel partners last week, both Chuck and I, and this is 85% of our business flows through channels. They buy the vision and strategy. He would say that he's probably going to make some tweaks to that. Where he thinks we can improve on, and I absolutely agree with him, he's an execution machine. Getting these pieces to work better together, realign resources uh, in terms of opportunities to where the growth is, then John, prioritize areas like security and software. Then what's the biggest piece of unfinished business you're handing off to him that he will attack, that he'll execute from the get-go? What's going to be exciting is we have a chance to replay the information age where Cisco's leadership in the Internet during the 90s powered our growth, changed our country, changed every business. You're going to see an instant replay with every country, every city, every business become digital. You either change, disrupt, or you die. You get left behind. Chuck will lead that, and I think he'll do a great job on it. So he, I led during the information age. He will lead during the digital age. John, I've watched you uh, uh, skillfully negotiate between both Republicans and the Democrats as Cisco has sold so well to government. But I wonder when you look at, at your future, so many people in Silicon Valley, Sir Carly Fiorina, of course, jumps out into mind, look at the world of politics as an opportunity where they want to have an impact. Is that something that interests you? Well, it does interest me, uh, but I'm, uh, you've got a problem. I'm a moderate Republican who likes Democrats, and uh, I like to work with both sides. Technology needs to be agnostic. What interests me about government is our country becoming a digital country. We are behind Germany, France, UK, China, India on this, and it will power the next generation of job creation, uh, economic well-being, middle class, wealth increase, etc. I also like to teach, and you'll see me probably uh, uh, teach in a number of areas, uh, and then probably work with young companies, startups, etc., helping them perhaps go public. So that, along with tremendous attention to my family, uh, well-deserved attention after doing this for 20 years, is what's in my future.
Carly Fiorina, if she were to be elected, would you consider her a Silicon Valley insider who's now in Washington? I think if we do our job right, we make each candidate uh, over the next year and a half very technology knowledgeable and savvy. And Silicon Valley has to be, again, neutral in terms of one candidate or another. Uh, I think it's so important for both the Republicans and Democrats to focus on job creation, getting our nation back on track. And whether it's a Democratic uh, president or a Republican president, I think you're going to see them align with technology, much as President Clinton did back in uh, the mid-90s, where he powered 22 million jobs created, uh, GDP and economic growth of the average citizen over 15 percent. That was powered in part by the Internet age. This digital age has the same opportunity. I don't know, John. You seem our to job know, is to make sure that each of the governments understand. You seem to know a lot of answers that maybe a political official would know, wouldn't you say? Uh, you know, there's a Senate seat in California, John, that, uh, that might be uh, up, uh, open pretty soon, <laughs> right? Are you interested? Well, uh, again, uh, they, candidly, no. Uh, politics moves too sm slow for me. And like I said earlier, I like Republicans and Democrats. I just like getting things done. Uh, I'd be honored to be an advisor to uh, whichever president wins. And I enjoy very much interfacing to the Democrats and Republicans, which I just did a couple weeks ago in a trip to Washington. Well, but John, it goes back. Technology will change this country. I'm afraid if you like getting Go things ahead. done, a future in politics right. isn't for you. And can we just say what a great job he did getting things done for 20 years? You know. I know. Cisco wiping the floor with all of his competitors. John Chambers absolutely deserves all the credit. What a terrific job.